One of my favorite simple techniques to record a cabinet is to simply set up out in a garage or in a shed or somewhere in another room. I like to just get a simple table, like a bridge table, and put some blankets over it and make a tent to put a cabinet in. If you've got a 115 or 410 cabinet, that'll work out pretty good. My miking techniques are pretty much the same. If I'm gonna use one mic, then I'll usually just take that mic and put it right up against the cone, maybe about two inches. On this 15 inch speaker, I have it just to the right of the cap. It keeps the speaker's smoothness pretty much in check. I'm able to get a nice round sound and some attack without it being too strident or too crazy. I always set up an additional mic. In this case, it's a medium condenser. This is an AKG 414, which has a good wide range. I like to set that back from the cabinet as far back as the speaker is wide. So in this case, I'm about 15 inches in front of the cabinet. This is right in the center because I want to get the entire tone of the cabinet. Sometimes this is all you need. And in this case, if you want the sound coming right out of the box, this for me tends to be the best way to go. So setting up these two mics in tandem gives me the best of both worlds. I get the full spectrum of the cabinet and I get the direct attack of the cone itself. If you've got commercial sound diffusion products like these film diamonds, I definitely recommend using them if you're gonna be cranking the amp up really loud. This will help the diffusion and bounce off of the speakers. I've taken the two microphones, the RE20 and the 414 from my garage enclosure. It's coming into these two preamps. The RE20 is going into this manly core, which is a pretty warm sounding preamp. It has a nice tube front end to it. And that's kind of heating it up just a little bit. I've got a boost on it to make sure that we can hear it really well. And no EQ whatsoever. I think the RE20 is a splendid sounding mic all on its own. We're not using any compression. We're just kind of going in flat, but using the really cool sound that that manly core has. Uh, the next preamp is uh, where the 414 is going in. This is the ISA 430. And similar to the manly core, I just have the bass just going in there through the preamp. And uh, in this case, we're just using both of them flat and they're both going into their own separate tracks into the DAW, into Pro Tools today. Um, they're running through the Audient ID22. And um, actually I'm using them in a digital mode. They're actually going into the ASP880. Because I'm able to access the analog to digital converters, these work out great. And then they come back through the ID22, digitally through ADAT, and then they go into my DAW. No amp? No problem. There are a myriad of great plugins that do a fine job of emulating your favorite amps right in your DAW. Just plug into your DI, pick an amp, and go. The built-in DIs and Audient gear are really great. Those along with a really good amp emulation program are pretty much everything you'd need. Some of my favorites are Line 6's Helix and TuneTrack's Easy Mix.